The command pattern is, again, fairly straightforward. What it does is encapsulates a user command as an object, and then that command can be executed. One of the big advantages of this is that we are then able to issue commands without knowing anything about the request or its recipient. What we shall do in the next example is to rewrite those subcontrol servlets that we were looking at in the template method example. We'll rewrite those as commands. And then the control servlet simply needs to instantiate a command and execute it. And it doesn't have to know anything about the request type. It doesn't have to know anything about the, the kind of object that is being dealt with. It just instantiates the command, executes it, and then moves on to the next thing. The participants then are this. We need a command, which is an interface in our example, a concrete command, which is a class that implements that interface, a client, which is the command factory, so that's going to generate one of these commands and instantiate it. We need an invoker that is going to be the control servlet that will invoke one of those commands by using the factory. And then a receiver, which in our example is going to be the concrete commands. Don't worry too much about the names for now. Let's take a look at how it will work. So in the command pattern example, again, we're only really interested in the source packages. A point that you might already have spotted here is that we're now starting to multiply the number of classes that we've got involved here. So our applications, although we're making use of these design patterns, are starting to multiply in, in the number of classes involved. But that doesn't really matter too much, especially if we organize them well with packages. The reason it doesn't matter so much is because by using the design pattern, we're tying ourselves into an established way of doing things. And that means that our systems become easier to write because we're only looking at very small bits of the system at a time. And they're also easier to, to follow, to maintain, to debug, to enhance. These uh, patterns will very often lead to applications that are extensible. So we can keep adding things in by adding an extra command and an, or an extra template and so on. Having made that point, let's just focus on the controller for the first instance. There's the do post, there's the do get, and here is the entire process request. All it does is to create a command, execute the command, and then hit the appropriate view page. Where does the view page come from? Well, it comes from the execute. The command will tell this controller which view to invoke. So let's have a look at how this is done. You can see that the first thing that the controller does is to access the command factory. So let's look at command factory. This has a static method and is used to create a command. So this is where the decision making is done about what kind of command to invoke. As has been done in the past, you'll be familiar with this concept. The request is consulted. We get the parameter called command and then we test its value. If indeed it has a command and the command is not empty, then if the command is all locations, then we're going to create a new all locations command object. If it's all employees, then we'll in, uh, instantiate the all employees command and so on and pass in request and response. So the command is created. So let's take a look at one of those, the all employees command. To instantiate it, all it's going to do is store the request and the response in these variables here. Now, does that make them not thread safe? Well, let's take a look. That is being set up as a static thing. So the thread, when it gets in there, is just going to come straight out. And even if it get, gets preempted, well, the variables that are used are all local to that method. And therefore, they're going to be saved when the, the thread is kicked off the processor. Back in the controller, it's the same thing. We've got no variables up here. So the command itself is going to be saved as part of the state of this method when the thread is preempted, and therefore it's quite safe to have these variables out here. Back in the controller, the next thing that happens is having created the command, the execute method is called. Well, how does the controller know that there's an execute method? Well, it's because 
this class implements the command interface. So if we take a look at the command interface, it's simply a public interface called command, and it has one method defined in there, execute. And therefore, because the controller is getting a command, which is of type command, it knows that there's going to be an execute method, so it can call it. It doesn't know what the implementation is. It doesn't even know what kind of command instance it's looking at. It doesn't matter because it requires a command and all employees command implements command and therefore it is a command. The controller calls the execute method and what we had before as part of the controller is now put here inside the execute method. What has happened here is that the the model component has been invoked, the bean has been set up, is tested to make sure that it exists, and then the view all employees.jsp name is returned. Strictly speaking, it didn't have to do that. It could, because you can see that we've invoked using the re request dispatcher, we've invoked the model, then we could and maybe should have invoked the view here. The advantage of invoking the view here is that the controller doesn't have to do it and therefore it has much less to do in terms of processing things. I think on reflection I would probably prefer to take the lines here 18 and 19 from the controller and put them into the individual commands. So there's the command pattern in use. A little bit more complicated in one respect but also a lot easier in another. Take a look at the controller now. Very simple, very straightforward. What's a little bit complicated is taking the bits that used to be in the controller and scattering them around the other parts of the system. So the command part of deciding what type of controller or subcontroller is needed, that's done here in the command factory. And then all the rest of it, which is what used to be the subcontroller in the template method design pattern, that is now in the command inside the execute method. But in all other respects, this is pretty well just as you have been doing it for the last few weeks in this module. More details about all of these can be found at the, the URLs that are listed on these slides.